Lesson for Monday, February 12th. Create in me a clean heart. Read Psalm 51, verses 1 to 5. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Why does the psalmist appeal to God's mercy? Through the prophet Nathan, God had exposed David's evil and why it was so evil, given that he, who had multiple wives, had done the great dishonor of sleeping with another man's only wife. Not just another man, but a man loyal to the king himself, to the nation of Israel and their army, a noble man of unquestionable integrity and character, whom David got killed to cover up his adultery. He knew he was a prime candidate for destruction. But that aside, he became truly repentant, knowing his only ray of hope was the amazing grace of God. King David pours out his heart before the Lord, asking for the forgiveness of sin during the spiritually darkest moments in his life. See 2 Samuel 12. Forgiveness is God's extraordinary gift of grace, the result of the multitude of your tender mercies. Psalm 51.1. King David appeals to God to deal with him, not in accordance with what his sin deserves, Psalm 103.10, but in accordance with his divine character, namely his mercy, faithfulness, and compassion. See Psalm 51, 1, and Exodus 34, 6 to 7. Read Psalm 51, 6 to 19. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. How is forgiveness of sin portrayed here? What is the goal of divine forgiveness? Divine forgiveness involves more than a legal proclamation of innocence. It produces a profound change that reaches the most inner parts of human self. Psalm 51 verse 6, Hebrews 4 12. It brings about a new creation. Psalm 51 10, John 3 3 to 8. The Hebrew verb bara, translated create, depicts divine creative power as seen at Genesis 1 verse 1. Only God can bara. Only God can produce a radical and lasting change in the repentant person's heart. 2 Corinthians 4 6 David asks for cleansing with hyssop. He feels that his guilt keeps him banned from the Lord's presence in the same way as the leper is banned from the community while the state of uncleanness lasts. Psalm 51 11. He fears that sacrifices cannot restore him fully because there was no sacrifice that could atone for his premeditated sins of adultery and murder. See Exodus 21 verse 14 and Leviticus 20 10. 
Only unconditional divine grace could accept David's broken and contrite heart as a sacrifice and restore David back into harmony with God. Psalm 51, 16-17 By asking for cleansing with hyssop, he wants to return to God's presence. If God can forgive David for adultery, deception, and murder, what hope exists for you? I am not a saint. I'm a sinner just like David, even if I do not know what it is like to sleep with another man's wife or to commit murder. I imagine the guilt for that is something that I myself have never experienced. But I know what guilt is. But the fact that God was able to forgive David for these sins, which I find a little bit hard to imagine myself doing, it really does give confidence that God's grace is indeed sufficient. If I should sink so low that I end up doing even worse, whatever that might be, it really is comforting that God has said in his word that where sin abounds, grace did much more, much more. And so we sing the song, grace will always be greater than sin. And it is a really comforting thought, knowing our propensity to sin. May we never, however, take that grace for granted. Here's a little secret. If you subscribe to this channel and give a thumbs up or a like to this video, YouTube's algorithms will cause the video to be shown to many more persons who can be blessed by these daily lessons. So go ahead and do your part to help spread the gospel to those in need. It only takes a moment. Please subscribe, like, and share this video for the Lord today. Thanks for watching.